Welcome, my name is Dana Brown. I'm Zojo's Director of Marketing. In this tutorial, we will continue reviewing data collections. If you remember, in our previous tutorial, we saw how to use the array collection, where we were able to assign and retrieve values by index, or the position occupied, by a given value or object in the array. Now we are going to see how to use collections using the dictionary class. Unlike arrays, the dictionary stores and retrieves the stored values through the use of keys. So what can we use as a key? We can use any kind of data type, from the primitive ones like numbers or strings, or any object created from a class. We only need to make sure that we are using the same key both for assigning and retrieving a value for that key. To put this in practice, we've made some changes in our example project, which is the app that is used to track our personal expenses, and whose features and capabilities are improving throughout the course. As you can see, the first change is adding a new form entry in the window layout that will allow us to assign a category to every new expense. For this, we have added a pop-up menu control to the layout. The pop-up menu is one of the already available controls you can find under the library panel and that is used to display a series of options that the user can choose from. In fact, we can provide such options both via code and directly through the inspector panel. For example, with the pop-up menu selected in the layout, we can change the initial value property to provide the options that we want to offer the users of the app. Then we'll be able to know what option is selected by the user accessing the designated property by the control. The next modification is to change the collection type we want to use to store our expenses. You already know that the expense data is wrapped into new instances created from the expense class. If you remember, the last thing we did in the previous lesson was to create an array property under the app object. And now we have changed that array by a dictionary data type. We named this dictionary property as categorized expenses. And unlike what happens with arrays, in this case, we need to create a new instance for it, which is something that we will do by adding a new open event to the window and adding a single line of code to that event handler to create a new instance from the dictionary class, using for that the new keyword, and assigning the new instance to the categorized expenses property. So what are we going to store in this dictionary? We're going to store different arrays that will store all of the created expenses for a given category. For this, we need to change some code in the action event handler associated with the add button button. And the first thing we need to do is to retrieve the selected category value from the pop-up menu, accessing for that the selected row value property from our pop-up menu and storing such value into the selected category variable. As you can see in the project browser and through the inspector panel in the layout editor, the name of our pop-up menu control is this one. Next, we declare a new array variable named expenses array and whose data type is expense. And then using these lines of code, the first thing we do is check if our dictionary already has an entry whose key matches the selected category. If that is the case, then we assign the value we retrieved for that key in the dictionary to the expenses array variable. And that would be a previous stored array with expense items. Next, we simply need to add a new expenses object to our expense array variable and store it again in the dictionary using the same key for that. As a last step, we will set the pop-up menu to the no selection value, clearing the form controls so the user can type new data for a new expense. Let's run the project so we can see how it works from the debugger and better understand how we use the keys for the dictionary. Let's put that we select the groceries category. Let's type a date. Meat as the item value and 30.40 as the total for the expense. As soon as we click on the add button, 
will be brought to the debugger because the break keyword is the last sentence for the code executed in the event handler. If we select the categorize expenses entry in the variables section, we can see the dictionary contents where we can see how groceries is used as the first key and has an array associated as its value. And if we click on the associated array, we will be able to see all of the array entries, that is the expense objects. And clicking on the entry for the array, we can see the values of the expense object. Let's add a new expense using that same category so it will be added to the array under the same key. In this case, the groceries key for the dictionary. Let's type cheese for this item and 9.50 for the total field. Let's click the add button, selecting the app object to access our dictionary property. So there's the same key, but in this case, the associated array stores two items. So as you can see, the dictionary collection is a very convenient way to keep under the same key or all the expenses objects for the same category. Let's add another expense using this in a different category. For example, a table with a value of 100.50. We can add the new expense jumping into the debugger and accessing the categorized expenses dictionary. And in this case, we can see how the dictionary is using two different keys matching our selected category. And in fact, the array associated with the just added key is storing the new expense for the table item. Let's add again a new expense for the same furniture key. For example, a chair with a value of 30.10. Once again, we select our Categorized Expenses Dictionary under the App Object, where we can click on the Furniture key to access the associated value. And in this case, the array stores two items, being the last one and the just added item. As you can see, the Dictionary class is a really easy and convenient one to keep the collection of data through the association of a value with a given key. Let's improve the way we create new expense objects. So there is no need to assign values to the properties one by one once the object has been created. Until now, we have only defined three properties in the expenses class, and we assign directly to them. The values retrieved from the window fields, that is the one from the total field dot value, converted to a double, the value from the item field control, and the date created from the string typed by the user in the date date value control. We can simplify all of this using one special method that we can implement in our class's definition. And this is the constructor method. In order to create a new method or function for the class, we only need to select it in the project browser, selecting next the add to entry in the contextual menu, and then the method option. Then let's name the new method as constructor and type the expected parameters under the parameters section. We can name the received parameters as item. That will be a string data type. Then value as a double data type. And expense date as a date time data type. So here we are creating what is called the method or function signature. That is both the name we need to use to call the method as the values it expects to receive in the same order and using the same declared data types. In the case of any method named as constructor, this is going to be called automatically every time we use the new keyword in order to create a new instance from the class. Now in the code editor associated with the constructor method, we only need to assign every received parameter to the associated properties that we're going to store their values. As you can see, we're using the me keyword here to reference the property under that specific instance. Now we can substitute all these lines of code with simply the creation of the new instance, passing along the expected parameters by the constructor method 
and this is important in the same order that the constructor expects to receive them when it is called. So in this case, it will be item field dot value, next total field dot value dot two double. And as the last parameter, we can use the same line of code to create a new date op object from the string typed by the user. So we can delete these lines of code now. And if we run our example project, selecting a new category, entering a date, item, and value, clicking the Add button, we can see how the new expense object has been added before. And in this case, the values are assigned through the constructor method for the object. As you can see, the constructor method is very convenient in order to create new objects or inst instances that need to be initialized with any given values. And that's all. I hope you found this tutorial interesting, and I hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. And follow us on social media, including Twitter and Facebook, and our blog, so you can be informed with the latest news, tips, and Zojo tutorials.